The last approach is mixed economy. What is a mixed economy? Mixed economy blends the advantages of both the capitalist economy and the socialist economy. While it is blending the advantages of both, it, it eliminates the disadvantages of both. It has features of both. It allows the private individuals to do business. At the same time, government also owns the factors of production. So both the sectors are coexisting. There is a private sector, there is a government sector, which is called as the public sector. Both these sectors are coexisting. The private individuals are allowed to own, buy and sell the factors of production. Government also has the control over them. There are some industries which are run by the government. The other industries are run by the private individuals. So both sectors coexist. The next feature of a mixed economy is it is a planned economy. When we were studying socialist economy, we learned that a socialist economy is a planned economy. Likewise, mixed economy is a planned economy also. But in the sense that the development is planned. In a mixed economy, the government plans how to grow a nation. What are the sectors that are to be interested to the private parties or the capitalists? What are the sectors that are important for the nation? And those sectors are handled by the government. The areas where the government thinks development is required, it tries to focus to the it tries to focus onto those areas. Now these areas may be geographical areas or sectoral areas. Thus, we can say that a mixed economy is a planned economy. Let's see the positives of a mixed economy. First, merits of both, eliminating the demerits. As I said, a mixed economy blends the merits of both a capitalist economy and a socialist economy. It has the merits of both because it allows private individuals to own the factors of production at the same time government also controls it. So it is mixing, it is blending the advantages of both. However, it eliminates the demerits of the both at the same time. The demerits of both get automatically eliminated when the advantages of both are blended. For example, Lack of competition is a demerit in a socialist economy. However, it is an advantage in a capitalist economy. So when it is taking the advantage of a capitalist economy, it eliminates the demerit of a socialist economy. So what happens is when it takes the advantages of both the economies, demerits automatically get eliminated. Second, less economic fluctuations and price mechanism. In a planned economy, you have less economic fluctuations. Mixed economy is a planned economy. So fluctuations are less. Fluctuations in terms of inflation, in terms of currency volatility, in terms of development, these fluctuations are less in a planned economy but when we talk about capitalist economy fluctuations are more there private individuals can set whatever price they want of their products but in a mixed economy individuals cannot set whatever price they want after a level they are governed by the government so fluctuations are less there are some areas which are looked after only by the government so this leads to more stability in the economy. The third positive is reducing inequalities. As I said, in a mixed economy, the government tries to bring about a balanced regional development. 
now when all the regions all the sectors all the areas in a country are growing and growing in a balanced manner what happens is inequalities get reduced because everybody is growing all individuals all areas all sectors are growing and growing in a balanced manner so what happens is inequalities shrink bringing about a balanced development this type of economy is best for underdeveloped and developing economies it is always good for underdeveloped and developing economies to be mixed economies because in these economies on one hand you can let the private individuals take over the production on the other hand the government can concentrate more on development the government can concentrate more on planning as to which areas need to develop which areas need more focus so this brings about a balanced growth on both the hands so this brings about a faster development for the underdeveloped and the developing countries let's take a look at the negatives in a mixed economy as i said it eliminates the negatives of both the earlier approaches the capitalist approach and the socialist approach however a mixed economy has its own negatives has its own problem to look after the first is it is very difficult to operate and balance both sectors in a mixed economy you have the public sector and then you have a private sector now it becomes very difficult to balance both which industries are to be allocated to the private sector which industries are to be maintained by the government what is the role of the government in the economic development what is the role of the capitalist in the economic development of a country balancing these two differentiating these two becomes very difficult the next point is excessive controls heavy taxes and red tape is there in a mixed economy the government puts a lot of controls on the entrepreneurs the entrepreneurs may not be allowed to produce all the goods they want the entrepreneurs may not be allowed to produce the amount of goods they want the entrepreneurs may not be allowed to earn the amount of profit they want the government puts restrictions on everything so there are excessive controls put up by the government there are heavy taxes in the country in a social in a mixed economy the government puts heavy taxes whatever you do you are taxed in a mixed economy you produce goods you pay excise tax you sell goods you pay sales sales tax you provide services you pay service tax you go for entertainment you go for a movie you pay entertainment tax you give somebody you pay gift tax so there is a excessive tax regime in a mixed economy and finally you also see red tapism in a mixed economy there is a lot of bureaucracy in the mixed economy in the government offices you see people hardly working but still they continue holding the official post it takes a lot of time to get your work done but still nothing has but still nothing is done so there is a lot of red tapism now let's see how a mixed economy tries to solve the economic problems first problem is what to produce in a mixed economy as this question will get the answer produce the goods which are needed the most and demanded the most that is it is a mix of capitalist and a socialist economy goods which are needed the most and demanded the most goods which would be needed the most will be demanded the most and you produce those goods how to produce the second question is how to produce in a mixed economy you produce goods 
with the techniques with least cost or with the techniques which lead to the highest employment the private sector uses the techniques which have the least cost the modern techniques the capital intensive techniques and the government uses the techniques which lead to higher employment which generate more employment so this problem gets sorted with the combination of both the things least cost techniques and high employment generation techniques the third question is for whom to produce in a mixed economy the goods are produced to be in a mixed economy the goods are to be produced for all the masses as well as the classes you produce goods which are required by the society you also produce goods which are required by the higher class so you produce goods for all the government produces the goods which are required by the society and the capitalist the entrepreneurs produce goods which are required by the higher class provision for economic growth the mixed economy as i said is very good for faster development when i say it is good for faster development that means it gives you provision for growth and development so how does it help you grow it gives you the savings and investment route it's the same that we've discussed in a capitalist economy when you save and you invest your savings you get additional return on it and these additional returns get compounded every year leading to gradual growth so in a mixed economy savings and investments are encouraged in our country india savings are encouraged by government it runs various schemes wherein people can save their money and earn higher returns on them so this brings us to the end on of our segment on central problems of economics